Hi guys, welcome to my YouTube channel, Dave D Fishing. So in this video, we're going to be fishing for frost fish, also known as whiting, on the South Shore of Massachusetts. These whiting are in the family of the cod, haddock, pollock. But when I show you one of these things, they, I know you probably will doubt that statement. They look nothing like them, but trust me, they are. Really sharp teeth on them. They fight decent on lighter tackle. So for these things you're going to be using, if you're fishing from a pier, I recommend using a six and a half foot rod to seven foot rod with at least a 2500 reel. You can use braid or monofilament. I use braid earlier in the winter or late in the fall because it's not totally freezing yet. Um, I usually don't go more than 12 pound tests ever. And if you're using monofilament, I recommend using 15. Um, these fish, the smaller ones under 12 inches, they don't really fight great. So anything above that, they can pull drag. Um, and I've seen these fish and I've caught them up to 16 inches or so. And I have seen some ex very large ones in shore, probably 18 inches or so feeding on bait fish. So um, they taste fantastic. I don't even put much seasoning on them. Sometimes I'll just throw them on a pan, throw them in a pan with olive oil, salt, pepper. They taste that good, or you can throw them in the oven if you want. They really don't need much to taste good. That's why I like going for them. Um, and I'm doing this video because I don't see people tar targeting them on YouTube. And I'm doing this also because it's nice to have something else to do in the cold months other than go freshwater fishing or um, doing ice fishing. You still can catch these things from now, it's November 3rd now, and you can catch them through December. I usually stop fishing in January and I take a couple months to chill out, usually. Um, but these fish are a nice option to just change things up. So spoke about the rod, the reel, the line. Um, as far as the rig, so you're going to be using fluorocarbon leader. I recommend it. You don't have to, but fluorocarbon leader for the rig part, the main rig. Um, and I recommend using fluorocarbon because these fish are sight feeders. And I have seen these fish shy away from my baits because they can see, I imagine they can see my... Um, rig material, mainly usually monofilament. So I spend the extra money and I will buy a roll of fluorocarbon just to help up my chances of the fish actually coming over and eating. And also again, these fish have teeth. So 90% of the time I hook this fish halfway into its mouth, which is exposing the rig to abrasion from their teeth. And these teeth again are sharp and similar to a pickerel. So I'm going to go about the, I'm going to talk about the layout now of the rig. So this is the rig right here. So at the bottom, we have a little dual clip or you can do a surgeon's loop. Doesn't matter either one. I like the dual clip because I can change up my sinkers really easy or add a jig to it or spoon. Again, about eight inches or so up from that, you have a dropper loop and you have your size one or two hook, you can go larger depending on the size of the fish that are there. And then another 18 inches or so, now the dropper loop. The dropper loops are about two to three inches long. Then you have your other hook. I use octopus hooks. Then another foot or so up from that, you have your little swivel right there. So this is a size eight. So some people might say why so far a distance between these two hooks. Um, that is because, like I said, these whiting cruise up and down all over the place and it is just more likely that they'll see a flash from your bait and it just, it seems to help out. I don't like to position them any closer together. I just found this distance seems to work. So um, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Spend the extra money, buy Sharp Hook Gamagatsu's owner's something with a really nice sharp point. You can use cheap bait holders um, from Walmart, those copper, those bronze colored ones from um, like Eagle Claw, you can do that, it's fine. I just recommend using sharp stuff because when these things bite, they will come up behind the bait and they'll usually charge at it. 
bite the bait, engulf it, and then turn really quickly so those fish can actually hook themselves. You can bounce the bait up and down off the bottom. You can hold the rod, that's fine. That's how I like to do it when the fish are in thick. If you just want to chill out and put the rod down and have the bait on the bottom, it's totally fine. Um, these whiting do go from the bottom all the way to the top. They follow the bait, they don't care. So once you find the fish, just obviously keep fishing that area. Um, as far as bait, I prefer to use strips of oily fish, namely mackerel. Um, peanut bunker will work great, or strips of pogey if you can have it. I usually flay them and cut them into two to three inch strips by half inch wide. Seems to work great. And that's really it as far as the rigs, the tackle, the fish itself. Um, as far as locations, look for lit docks, preferably in 10 feet or more depth of water. Um, places like Black Falcon and Boston are excellent places. You want moving water. If there's not moving water, more than likely there's not going to be many fish there. You might catch one or two, but if you have current and in good depth, you should be able to catch more than that. Um, there's Summer Street in Boston, which I know people have caught them there. Marina Bay and Quincy is another good spot, and you also catch smelt there. And usually these whiting are by catch of um, smelt fishing. So um, dress warm, because usually this time of year it is freezing out. I already did one fishing session that I filmed for these whiting, and it was gusting up to 20 miles an hour, and I just stopped filming at that point, and I kept fishing because it was so loud. You couldn't even hear my voice when I was talking a foot away from the camera. Um, gloves, I usually will, I recommend bringing gloves with you. I'll cut the tips off of the index finger and thumb, probably an inch or so, but I don't cut the thumb all the way off. I make it so I can flip it back over because you will be cold. Um, you can bring a generator with you. I bring my little Honda generator. It is quiet for the most part. Um, just because I like fishing alone and that's my alone time and that's sort of my therapeutic time um, and it also allows me to access spots that normally people wouldn't fish and um, and I can also just try new spots that don't have light and you never know usually I can find the fish or at least eliminate a spot that I know isn't isn't working all right guys so enjoy the video Please like, comment, subscribe. If you have any questions about fishing for these things, put it in the comments below. Um, now to the fishing. Okay guys, so I'm just gonna show you how to put these strips of mackerel on your hook. So you grab your size one or two hook, grab your piece of mackerel. So you wanna go through the meat side first and then out towards the skin. Sorry, it's really windy, just like that. And then you can go back in, so poke through the skin, like that. That's, that's all you do guys, it's really that simple. To use this high-low rig with the mackerel on it, simply just toss it out about 10 feet or so, make sure it hits the bottom, and you can either put the rod down and watch for a bite, just make sure your line is tight if you do this, otherwise you won't see the bite, or you can hold the rod and jig the bait up and down off the bottom. Oh, oh my goodness. Oh, you just had a whiting on there. Oh, they're here, they're here. Got something. Oh, there's another one right there. Oh man. So this is my first whiting of the year. Very welcome sight. So I caught this guy just jigging the bait up and down off the bottom. And I was lifting the bait probably every five seconds or so and it seemed to work. Uh, my other rod that was just sitting there was getting bites as well. And this guy right here has peanut bunker sitting in his mouth that he had eaten earlier and then went after my bait. So I'll take those peanut bunker and I will repurpose them for my own bait. Here's whiting number two that I caught about 30 seconds after my previous one. Using the same method, just bouncing the bait up and down off the bottom. There we go. Whiting number three of night one. Just another little guy. You can see um, I said earlier that when these whiting grab their bait, usually they inhale it, and this one got hooked in the eye socket from the inside. So that's how aggressive they hit these baits. Here's night one's results. Pretty happy with it. I got three fish total. 
I probably left 10 minutes after that third fish just because it was getting way too windy out. Um, couldn't hear me talking on the camera. So, But overall, I'm pleased. It was more of a test night or investigation night to see if they're even in yet. So I will take this as a win. All right, so it is my second day trying for whiting. The first day was actually really good, but it was so windy out. Like I said, I couldn't capture much good audio at all. Um, again, we're back out the next day and it's beautiful out. So we're using this little six and a half foot um, spinning rod with the 2500 series reel on here. This is a $40 setup. You don't need anything crazy to catch these things. And it's nice enough out where I can get away with a one ounce sinker. Um, then I will also be using these little storm shads to catch these things. These things are feeding on peanut bunker right now and they are chock full of them. So we're gonna have one rod with the cut up um, strips of mackerel on it, high low rig that I showed you earlier in the video. It is incoming tide and it is 54 degrees out whereas yesterday it was 42 I think not counting the wind chill. So um, yeah, let's get fishing. So this bite's really interesting. The fish grabs it and then swims straight up. You'll see the line go slack. Beautiful fish right there. Dinner. If you do set your rod down, just be careful. These fish, um, if they're big enough, they could obviously rip your rod in the water, so just be careful. So I'm getting a little bored of just using the Hilo rig for these whiting, so I'm going to use this little 3 inch Storm Wild Eye Shad. I'm just going to be tossing it out letting it hit the bottom and then lifting it up probably four or five feet and then assisting it back down to the bottom. And I'm pretty sure this thing will work as I keep finding peanut bunker in their mouths and I can't find a better imitation than this little thing. On the jig. Oh, oh I actually caught him in the tail. Oh, no, he wrapped himself up. Ah, look at that. Sweet. Oh, that's a big one right there. Beautiful, lively whiting. All right guys, so look at this result right here. What do you think about that? Is that enough whiting for you? So, um, yeah, it was a good night out. So I caught a couple on jigs, a little storm shad. I think it was like a two and a half or three inch storm shad. Um, and the rest of them I caught on cut up mackerel, which seemed to work great. And I snagged a couple of peanut bunker and threw those on, it worked fantastic. And I also caught a little tiny um, snapper bluefish. I threw those on hole and they ate it. So yeah, this is, I don't know if I'm gonna top this the rest of the year. So oodles and doodles of these things. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you at least found it entertaining. Please like and subscribe. If you have any questions about these guys, please put it in the comments below. If I can't answer your question, hopefully someone else can chime in. Um, it's been a fantastic night out. I don't know if I'll do another video on whiting. If you want me to, I can. Um, maybe more specifically with jigs. So um, yeah, I didn't, I didn't capture every single fish on video that I caught because at one point there was too much going on. I had the generator going, I was, jig I was using two rods um, and both of them sometimes are going off at the same time and it's hard to juggle all that and mess with the camera so i hope you guys understand that so again thank you guys